Good afternoon. Uh, this is the ninth video in my 13 games of Halloween series. So I was having some cute computer troubles earlier, so I was unable to post a video on Thursday, but I'm going to make two videos today to make up for it. So um, just hold on to your horses and let's go. So this is called Dark as Blood. It's a short text-based horror game, so let's see here. Somewhere, a church bell rings. You open your eyes to bare branches clawing the night sky. You are not at home with her. You are cold. I stand. Oh, it looks like a- oh, it's a cool person's like holding a dagger and like a lantern. That is so cool. You rise from the damp earth and look down at your hands. They are stained with dirt and blood from your cracked and missing nails. You look, you look up and see flickering points of light among the dark pines. You hear familiar voices and the barking of dogs. Their long, dark shadows twist beneath the trees and dance on tangled roots. You recognize them by the light of their torches. They are the men of your village. They are calling your name. I flee. You turn and run through the dark wood. You run fast like you did when you, like you, did when you were young. Dark branches whip past you as you move. You burst through the dark pine boughs and find yourself in a clearing. I turn. They are all around you then. Men and fire and snarling dogs. They form in a ring. Hounds leap and snap, slobbering at the ends of their tethers. The circle closes around you. Tortures roar and you see the dull glint of spears and blades in the eyes of men. I run, I talk, or I fight. I'm gonna fight. <laughs> a man with a familiar scarred face thrusts a spear at you. You move without thinking. You push the spear aside and lunge forward. Your hand finds his throat and you feel it come away. Men scream. The man with a scarred face and tattered neck stumbles. His front is dark with blood. You blink as your vision begins to cloud, and darkness takes you. The church bell rings again and again. You stand in the middle of the empty village street. Around you, houses are dark, dark and silent as the trees of the wood. You look down at your hands and forearms and see they are stained. Between the clanks of the bell, you hear the voices of men moving closer. Something is wrong. The village isn't safe. You must save her. She's at the house. I move quickly. You follow the streets. Windows are shuttered, doors closed, no lanterns have been lit. The town lies empty, though you hear the distant cries of men and the barking of hounds. You turn a corner, and there you see a woman banging on a wooden door. She sees you and screams. You move to speak to her, and she turns to run. She falls on the dry earth, scraping her hands and knees. You freeze as you watch the blood well up from her pores, muddying the dust of the road spreading until its darkness has filled the whole of your vision. The bell sounds nearer now. You are in the town square, though the earth is painted dark. A dead hound lies by the well, burst like harvest left too long in the sun. The air stinks of salt and iron and bile. You feel splitting pain at your shoulder and turn instinctively to see a boy from the village. He lets go of the knife buried in your back. You look down and see the length of your arm disappearing inside his chest. His eyes are wide, and as he tries to speak, blood wells up over his lip and spills from inside. You draw him close. He is small, like her. His breath is warm. The smell of salt and iron and bile takes you, fills you, and leaves only darkness. The church bell rings. There are angry men outside your house. They are sending torches to the wooden thatch. She is inside. I'm gonna- I stop them, I rush inside. I mean, I'm gonna rush inside. You tear past the villagers. They cry out when they see you. A man gets in your way and you hurl him aside. He flies back against the wall of the house and does not move. You crash through the wood of the door. You move through your burning home. You call her name. You breathe in smoke and cough reflexively. The smoke does not shorten your breath, nor burn your eyes. And though you feel the fire lick your flesh, it does not dispel the cold of night. She's not here. I remember. You run through the town towards the ringing of the bell. You come to the churchyard. Half-sunken headstones sit like broken teeth, forgotten and lichen-stained by the old stone church. Among them, there is a fresh grave. Wet earth is spilled around a dark standing stone. It bears your name. You push open the wooden doors and move past the carven pews. Above you, the bell rings. A spiral stair leads to the bell tower. I climb. She is in the belfry, its four walls open to the night sky. The bell in the rafters above still tolls from the rope that has fallen from her hands. Her eyes are wide with fear. Her fingers, her fingers scramble to pick up a shard of slate. 
Her knuckles clench white as she holds the point between you. Dark blood wells up between her fingers and drips upon the board. I step towards her, I stay where I am, or I step away from her. Um, I'm going to stay where I am. You feel your muscles tighten as you freeze. A second drop of blood falls from her fingers. You hear it, you smell it, you feel it. Darkness beats like raven wings at the corners of your mind. A high wind rushes cold against you, but you feel no chill. A third droplet of blood drips from her fingers. You smell the iron in it, you feel its heat. Her outstretched arm trembles, hands still clenched around the stone. Your head reels as darkness encroaches on your vision. Over the rooftops and dark pines, a single line of white dawn breaks, impossibly bright. You fall to your knees as your eyes are seared by the sudden brilliance. The light fills the whole of your vision and your mind, as if from far away you hear her voice calling your name, and beyond it, the ringing of a bell. The end. Looks like there's multiple endings, so I'm going to try and see if I can get another one. Um, so I don't know, that other option was like underneath the screen, so I don't know what it was, but I clicked it. You walk cautiously towards the men among the dark trunks. As you draw near, the barking of dogs grows into a maddening frenzy. In the sickly half-light of the torches, you see the gaunt and terrified faces of men you once knew. I turn. So this time I'm going to run. You try to run to break the circle, but they have closed in around you. You wield madly in the circle of torchlight, trapped and disoriented. Every way you, every way you turn, you are ringed by grim faces, fearful eyes glinting behind masks of intent. This time I'm going to talk. They speak to one another, not to you, but to each other. They are afraid of you. You cry out, yell at them to stop. You shout questions, demand their answer. They shrink away at your words, recoiling as if from a dreadful sight. One among them, a man you know, points at you and urges them forward. So I guess I have no choice but to fight. So darkness. So last time I moved quickly, this time I'm going to move carefully. You move away from the shadows of the village, over a tumbled stone wall and into the fields. From the village, you hear the distant cries of men and the barking of hounds. You see the woman. On another night, you might have missed her, hiding in the ruins of a farmer's stacked stone hut. But your eyes are adjusted to the dark, and they seem drawn to her. She sees you also and screams. You move to speak to her, and she turns to run. She falls on the dry earth, scraping her hands and knees. You freeze as you watch the blood well up from her pores, muddying the dust of the field, spreading until its darkness has filled the whole of your vision. So it's basically like the same thing that happened before you go in there and the little boy stabs you and then you kill him. So um, now we're, now they're setting fire to my house. So I stop them. You rush towards the villagers. Your momentum carries you into one lane, torch to wood. He flies back against the wall of the house and does not move. Fire has already taken hold and flames spread greedily along the thatch. You feel something pierce your side, a spear. At the other end, a frightened man, a neighbor. You know his face. You snap the spear like dry kindling and strike the man, your fingers rake his chest. Harsh red limes blossom across his breast, his blood flowers over the cloth, and beyond, growing wider until its darkness fills the whole of your world. Above the crackle of flames, you hear the ringing of the bell. You move through your burning home, you call her name. You breathe in smoke and cough reflexively. The smoke does not shorten your breath nor burn your eyes. And though you feel the fire lick your flesh, it does not dispel the cold of night. She's not here. I remember. Okay, so didn't change much. I climb, so I can't. Last time I stayed where I was, so this time. This time I'm going to step towards her. You step towards her. You say her name. A second drop of blood falls from her fingers. You hear it. You smell it. You feel it. You take another step. A third drop falls, like a tear. It smells of salt and of iron and wet heat. You walk into the outstretched shard of stone. You feel no pain. You shed no blood. Her hands fall limply to her side. An angry slash gapes on her open palm. You can feel her heartbeat and its throbs. The wound seems to widen and spread, opening until it envelops you and darkness claims you. Okay, cool. So this time I'm going to step away from her. You feel your muscles tighten, and you turn away. A second drop of blood falls from her fingers. You hear it. You smell it. You feel it. 
Your head reels, and darkness encroaches on the edge of your vision. You stand at the edge of the tower, looking down over the rooftops and dark pines far below. Now this time I can either jump or I pause. Um, let's do I jump. A high wind rushes cold against you, but you feel no chill. A third droplet of blood drips from her fingers. You smell the iron in it. You feel its heat. You lean forward, past the point of vertigo. The rooftops and dark pines rush to meet you. At the bottom, there's darkness. But let's see what the final one is. I pause. You hesitate there on the brink. A third droplet of blood drips from her fingers. You smell the iron in it. You feel its heat. You turn and see her. The slate shard protrudes from your side, slick with blood. You feel no pain. You shed no blood. An angry slash gapes on her open palm. You can feel her heartbeat in its throbs. The wound seems to widen and spread an opening until it envelops you and the darkness claims you. Well, there you have it. Apparently I'm a vampire and my girlfriend killed me. So that's that for that game. Uh, that was quite an enjoyable, creepy little game there. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll, of course, as always, put the link in the description if you want to play it yourself. This is in browser, so it's you don't need to download or anything. It's super easy to play and super cool. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.